Hey folks, today we're going to talk about solubility product constants. This is going to be a very short video, uh, and there's a good reason for that. Solubility product constants are simply an equilibrium constant. So they're exactly the same thing as what we've been doing. But we're talking about the solubility of electrolytes. It's the product of the concentration of ions, each raised to the power of their coefficient. So let's think, for example, about sodium chloride. We have sodium chloride, which is a solid, and it becomes sodium with a positive charge, which is aqueous, and chlorine with a negative charge, which is aqueous. Remember, we never deal with solids, so those go away. So we only have the um, concentrations of the two aqueous things on the right. So it's very, very similar to what we did last time, but there's not going to be a denominator because the reactant is a solid. All right. So something we have to think about is our solution must be saturated. So typically when we think of a solution, and we're still going to have some solid down in the bottom. So we've stirred this thing up as best we can. The solution is saturated. Everything that has dissolved is going to dissolve, can dissolve. Of course, some of this is still dissolving, and some of it is going back into a solid form. Hence, we have equilibrium. But to have equilibrium, the solution, solution must be saturated. Okay? So the larger values for Ksp... This is your solubility product constant, SP, solubility product constant. The larger number we have, the more stuff is dissolved. The smaller values, the less it's dissolved. And as we approach zero, we just say it doesn't dissolve at all. Okay? So let's look at some examples. We already talked about this one um, on a previous slide, but the thing on the left is a solid. The thing that is dissolving is a solid, so we don't have to worry about it. So all we have to do is do the concentration of the sodium ion, which is aqueous, plus, uh, times the solubility of the chloride ion, which is also aqueous. Right? So that's all we have to do. It's very simple. Um, if we look at the second one, dissoci dissociation of magnesium chloride, Notice we've got two chlorines over here, so we're going to have to square that, just like we did in our last podcast. So it's going to be Mg with a 2 plus charge, and it's going to be multiplied by the concentration of the chlorine minus ion, or the chloride ion, but it is going to be squared because we have a 2 coefficient in front of it. Right? That's all there is to this, folks. Go ahead and give it a couple of tries. See what you can do for the dissociation of calcium fluoride. Go ahead and pause the video. Obviously, to do this, you need to have a balanced chemical reaction, so do that first. Okay, so we have calcium fluoride, which is CaF2. Did you get that? Calcium has a plus 2 charge. Fluorine has a minus 1. So when it dissociates, we get calcium with a 2 plus charge, which is aqueous. And we get fluorine with a 1 minus charge, and there have to be two of them, and those are also going to be aqueous. Right? And, of course, the thing over here is a solid, so we don't have to worry about it. So we have the concentration of calcium, which has a 2 plus, it's a 2 plus ion, and the concentration of the fluoride ion, which, of course, is squared because of the 2 coefficient in front of fluorine. All right, give it another one. Aluminum hydroxide. Pause the video, see if you can do this one. All right, we have aluminum hydroxide, which is a solid, and it's ALOH3, and there have to be parentheses around the OH. Aluminum has a plus 3 charge, OH has a minus 1, and it becomes aluminum with a 3 plus charge, and we have three hydroxide ions, which are each negative. These are both dissolved in water, so they are both aqueous. We don't worry about the solid when we're doing concentrations. So our solubility product constant is going to be the concentration of aluminum times the concentration of the, sorry, the aluminum ion and our OH minus ion, but that has to be cubed because there are three of them up there. And that's going to be our solubility product constant for the dissociation of aluminum hydroxide. Last one, pause the video, see if you can do this one on your own. Yes, please pause the video and do it. All right, bismuth, it tells you it has a 3 plus charge. And we have sulfide, which has a 2 minus charge. So it's going to be Bi2S3. And that is going to dissociate into two bismuths, each one with a 
three plus charge and three sulfide ions, each one with a two minus charge. So your solubility product constant is going to be bismuth, which is aqueous, which has a three plus charge. Let me put aqueous out there just to remind us that those are both aqueous. And this one over here is a solid, so we don't have to worry about it. And we have two bismuths, so we have to square that concentration. And our sulfide ion, which has a two minus charge, which is also aqueous. I've got three of them. So the concentration of bismuth squared times the concentration of the sulfide ion cubed, and that gives us our solubility product constant. And that's it, folks. If you do your worksheet, we'll see you in class. Have a great day. Bye-bye.